Hey, Jason here. Today's video, I'm gonna answer the question, should you invest in cloud SaaS company? Zuora, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Z-U-O-R-A is the name, Zuora. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Stock ticker, Z-U-O. This is an investment analysis for Naveed K who requested this on YouTube. Before I get to that though, I'm gonna let you know you can get the series of podcast anywhere in the world for free on all major podcasting platforms. Stitcher, Anchor, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and more. I apologize if you see my other videos. I apologize. I don't want to do this. I have to do this because every time I don't, I get nasty comments. I do not short sell ever. Um, I do not own it. So I don't benefit if I talk negatively about a stock. I don't own any stock in the co any company I talk about. So I don't benefit in a positive way. This is for educational purposes only to help you become a better investor faster by um, showing you things to spot in a company's financials on a very initial short-term basis or on a very initial basis sorry because of that and because frankly these are requested by viewers i don't most of the time know anything the company does unless it's a bigger company of course um, i purposely do not do that i don't care about the company's story i don't care about its potential i don't care what the ceo said it's going to do i don't care um, if the CEO and executives say it's going to transform the world, I don't care about any of that at this stage of the analysis. The reason I don't care about any of that at this stage is because I don't want it to bias me either negatively or positively at this stage. I want the numbers to essentially speak for themselves, which we're about to look at. If a company doesn't meet my minimum, my minimum um, requirements at this stage, I do not do further research on the stock again because I, <laughs> I don't. Um, a com company at this stage has to reach my minimum threshold or I don't even get to the stuff about story um, because I want that minimum margin of safety. What else? Anything else? Oh, um, why should you trust me for anything that you're learning here? In the first um, nine years of my career, I produced average annual returns in the portfolio manage of 23.5% per year on average, not compounded. In the first nine years, that puts me just behind Warren Buffett um, who produced 24.2% returns in the first nine years of his career at his Warren Buffett Limited Partnership. These numbers legitimately make him one of the best stock pickers in the world over the last nine years. Um, I'm not saying any of this to brag. I'm saying this to prove to you that I actually know what I'm talking about a little bit. So, um, And I'd love to help you in any way I can. Okay, again, I apologize for that. I don't want to do it. have to do it. Now, let's get to the fun stuff. Zorora. Again, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Z-O-R-A. Zorora. So if this is a Chinese company, it could be Zor. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna butcher that. Sorry. Any any Mandarin speakers out there? I took Mandarin I, years ago. I took Mandarin. <laughs> uh, taught myself Mandarin. Um, but that was years ago, and I forgot the pronunciation. Zorora. Maybe. I don't know. Again, I apologize if you're a Mandarin speaker out there. <laughs> For my horrific uh, Mandarin pronunciation or attempted pronunciation. Turns out this may not even be a Chinese company because it's based in California. So don't have to worry about that potentially. Um, 1.8 billion now company. Um, again, I was scrolling down before looking at this because I don't know what this company does. I've never heard of this company before. Uh, Navid K. Thank you for this. And I've never heard about this company, so I don't even know what it does, which is why I was scrolling down. But first, Market cap, $1.8 billion. Um, price of sales isn't terrible. Um, I don't care about price of sales ever, but if it's something like 20, 30, 50, I've seen price of sales 100 recently. Uh, that's one sign the company could be overvalued. This is means that the company is likely unprofitable right here, that those none over here for the forward PE. Okay, Zuora, again, hopefully that's correct, provides cloud-based software on a subscription basis that enables companies in various industries to launch, manage, and transform into a subscription business. The firm offers Zora Central platform that acts as an intelligent subscription management hub that automates a subscription order to cash process, including quoting, billing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Zora, <laughs> sorry again, I feel like I'm butchering that 
caters to various industries comprising software, hardware, media, transportation, construction, healthcare, education, retail, Internet of Things, and other worldwide and others worldwide. Geographically, it derives majority of its revenue from the United States. So this is a software as a service company, also known as a SaaS company. Um, that gives me some insight into their, or an enormous amount of insight into their business model right there. And it also allows me to know that if they're doing things well and efficiently, that they, if not now, that they may at some point have some massive competitive advantages. Why? Because let's say you have a software and you have 10,000 clients paying you $97 a month. That brings in, what, $9,700 a month regularly? No, that's not right. Butchering the math too, apparently today. 97 times 10,000. There we go, 970,000, that's way off. <laughs> uh, that brings in $970,000 in monthly recurring revenue. Monthly recurring revenue is important um, because it gives the company an enormous amount of stability in terms of, again, if this is a monthly recurring basis, which let's say it is, then this brings in almost a million dollars per month at the example numbers that the company can count on um, outside of people unsubscribing and stuff like that. This gives enormous power to SaaS companies because it gives them stability, which enables them, um, again, to know what the cash flow kind of they should expect, but also gives them stability and the ability to grow rapidly um, as well. ClickFunnels is a great example of a uh, SaaS company that has just exploded from nothing, what, four or five years ago to now having something like 60, 70, 80,000 monthly paying subscribers. Um, that's a private company, so there's no valuation on it or anything. Um, but if and when they do come public, public or get bought out, because of their business model, they have an enormously, or they will be bought out at an enormously large uh, multiple because of that. So, because again, this I'm going through all of this because that, because my knowledge of SaaS companies enables me to know that this company is likely, at least to me, will be overvalued. Um, it will be trading at a high multiple related to its profits and cash flows, um, even potentially to its revenues, because typically SaaS companies have higher valuation multiples, um, which we will talk about shortly. Okay, so this company has grown revenues very well in 20, since 2016, from 92 million in 2016 to 305 million in trailing 12 month period. Um, they are not profitable. Again, that's typically I want this to be above 10% on a consistent basis, positive 10%, their operating profit margin. This is negative 24.2 to negative 52.2% in the last 12 months. Not a massive, or it's not a surprise at all, frankly, because again, a lot of these SaaS companies are unprofitable because they wanna go grow rapidly. So they put all their money back into growing the company, acquiring client lists, acquiring email lists, acquiring, acquiring clients, marketing, stuff like that. Um, so their operating profits here being negative is not a huge surprise or not a surprise at all, actually. Not a great thing, of course, especially from the valuation perspective for my perspective and what I require, but it's not a red flag for a SaaS business to fund because they're unprofitable on an operating profit basis to fund their continued growth they've issued a ton of shares um, up from 44 million shares in 2016 to 118 million shares in the last year i've talked in a bunch of videos why that's bad um most of the time why okay most of the time that's bad 99 percent of the time this is bad issuing a ton of shares because it leads to huge decreases in share prices. I'll get to that in a second. Let's see if that's the case here. Okay, so this company actually just came public, looks like in 20, was that 2018? So their numbers go back a couple years earlier, but their shares have gone down um, since their IPO by 23.3%. Why? Partly because of the share dilution. Um, think of share dilution like inflation. Right now we're dealing with inflation in the U.S. to a crazy degree. Frankly, we haven't seen since the 19, early 1980s. Um, and it's right increasing the prices rapidly on things like steel, copper, uh, lumber, uh, energy like gas and oil, stuff like that. 
shared dilution does the same thing. Um, because at the base level, the company uh, companies are valued on, on a base level at the profits and the cash flows they produce on a per share basis over long periods of time. If you issue more shares, it means there are more shares to spread out the operating profits, or in this case, the negative operating profits, which means the value per share is lower um, because the profits per share are lower. So that is very similar to how inflation works for, the, for let's say, the US dollar. Um, if you continue to do this, it destroys value in the company because there's less profits per share um, that are spread out for the company and that lowers the per share value or per share price and valuation of the stock. Okay. Okay, okay. don't see anything else there. ROIC, hugely negative. Again, not a huge surprise, not great. Um, but not a huge surprise. I look for anything above positive 10% on a consistent basis here, and this is negative 30% to negative 93.5% in the last uh, since 2016. So again, not great. Free cash flow to sales is massively negative again. Except for last year, it was not. It was negative 0.61%. Um, before that, it was negative 10% or greater or worse. I guess is um, the proper way to put it. Negative 0.6% again, still not great, but it's not horrific. Uh, they likely decreased the amount of money they were losing on a free cash flow basis through things like share issuances and maybe debt as well. Um, again, not great here, but not a surprise for a SaaS company. Okay. Other short term liabilities make up a big chunk. I would want to know what that is. Very minimal debt on the balance sheet. That's good compared to a decent amount of cash. Very good. Their cash conversion cycle doesn't matter because they're a software company. Cash conversion cycle is important for um, companies that produce hard assets. Okay. So they have, what's the market cap again? 1.85 billion. So they have about 10% of their market cap in cash, $186.6 million in cash. Dun, dun, dun. This is a little surprising to me at first glance, buildings and improvements, but likely, um, well, they probably have a lot of servers and uh, databases and stuff like that, so they have to have a lot of space. So that's not surprising. Uh, which also leads into why they have a large amount of machinery and PP&E and stuff like that as well. Frankly, that's given them the benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt. Maybe they have some swanky offices in uh, where were they at California? I don't know, <laughs> but that's another factor too. Is the crazy high uh, real estate prices in California? Okay, low debt. We already talked about that. Nothing really here. Deferred income and customer advances. That's interesting. Deferred income, customer advances, billing excess of costs. These are current. So this is the amounts. Again, this is where um, the subscription model, monthly subscription model comes into great play for companies is because they, some people, again, depending on their model, they may have a monthly subscription model only. They ha may have a, I would say some companies, um, they do not from the looks of it. But some companies offer what's called a full pay and you get a discount. So let's say you pay $97 a month for 12 months. Instead of that, you could pay, let's say 500 bucks as just a kind of a round number if you paid in full up front. So that would cover um, some future, exp or not future expenses, future income, which is what this is. Um, and then others, companies do both. So some people might pay up front. Some people might do the monthly subscription thing, 
but if they pay in full for the full year, that's where this kind of deferred income is spread out over um, the entire year, not just not just um, one time. So that's likely where some of this money is coming from here. Capital lease is relative, uh, actually really clean balance sheet. Really clean balance sheet. We've talked about retained earnings, accumulated deficit in a bunch of videos. Um, you, if you want to see any of our old videos, you can uh, check those out in the links below uh, for free. I've talked about accumulated deficit in uh, several videos, so I'm not going to talk about that here. Okay. Operating leases. Clean balance sheet. Yeah, that's that adds a lot of margin safety. They have more cash than debt. Um, that's a very good thing for the company. Cash flow statement. Since they recently IPO'd, they have a regular stock-based compensation that it frankly just might be part of their um, remuneration policy, policy for executives, employees, and stuff like that as well too. So nothing major on the cash flow statement. Again, relatively clean uh, cash flow statement too. Where is the share issuances? I need to go to the annual for that so I can illustrate that. Proceeds, I think is what it starts with from issuance of, yep, common stock. So they, by selling stock in 2019, they gained about $164.7 million in cash um, for the sale of that stock in 2019, which is where that huge dilution comes up. So frankly, not as crazy as I expected in terms of cash levels and effect on the company, um, but still not a great thing. Okay, and here's where we get to, again, where most companies die for me, and I say this pretty much at the end of every video I do, because most companies I look at, um, they have something wrong with them i would invest in them based on the metrics or if they reach that threshold which zora, zora does not um, then they fail on the valuation metrics and because the company is unprofitable on an earnings basis they are on a cash flow basis as well so i don't know why this is showing a number at all and they are on our operating income basis as well so I've done this in a few videos where I've showed you how to kind of get a relative valuation of a company. And I'm actually going to do that again today because I haven't done it in a while. And I can't think of the video to recommend you to watch. So this is exactly how I would value or get, again, get a relative estimate of value for a company that is unprofitable. So it had 1.85, yep, 1.85. So you want to find a company on with a similar size and then compare them. Get out of here, add. Okay. So let's go with Kronos, a $1.85 billion market cap, which is exactly, or at least according to Finviz, I don't know when their data pulls from, if it's every day, if it's during the day, I don't know. Oh, is it Kronos Worldwide? Is that the, what it was? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the... This company is profitable, which is good. That helps because it makes the um, comparison easier. So first thing, revenue. Kronos has $1.7 billion in revenue versus Zuora's $302 million in revenue. Operating income is positive $104 million in the last 12 months for Kronos. 
it's negative 74 million so a difference of uh what about 180 80 million dollars there net income is positive 57 million for chronos negative 73 million for zora and free cash flow for chronos is 111 million positive versus negative 2 million in other words these companies are valued about the same by the market, but Kronos's revenue is, what is that? 1.7 versus 305, uh, five, almost six X higher. Their profits across the board, operating income, net income, free cash flow are the difference of 100, 100 to 200 million dollars. Um, I can't say a percentage because the percentages for Zora is negative. But hopefully this illustrates, oh, and what is this company's valuation? This as well. Ugh. Okay, so here's the final part. So just kind of off the face of it, you can tell that at least right now, Zora or Kronos, sorry, is the better business in terms of the metrics, in terms of what's happening right now and in the past. And yet, and it's, I mean, what, five, six X higher revenues and 100 to 200 million dollars higher in profits and cash flows. And yet this company is overvalued on a PE basis, undervalued on a price to cash flow basis. Uh, I can't read the forward PE. I say undervalued here and here on the cash flow basis and the PE, um, I don't care about these metrics in full transparency much, but when I do, I want them to be under 20. Um, this is the most important number here, enterprise value to EBIT. I want this to be below eight, and this is at 23.2. So this shows that Kronos is overvalued by a decent amount. And yet, revenue for it is five, six times higher than Zora, and profits are 100 to $200 million better than Zora, which means Zora uh, even more overvalued than Kronos, and Kronos is overvalued right now. So if you are dealing with an unprofitable company, this is one way I look to see if, or to kind of get an idea of the company's valuation. This is one way I do it. Um, I hope that was helpful. I hope this entire analysis was helpful, but to kind of wrap up, I would not invest in Zora um yeah it, depending on its model and depending on its leaders and how long it plans to do things SaaS companies can be ex insanely insanely valued um uh, and bring the company insiders and shareholders a lot of money the business model lends itself to that with the stability and stuff i talked about however because of the SaaS business model it's plowing all that money back into the company it's producing no profits um no operating profits, no net profits, and uh, negative free cash flow. Because of that, it's have to, having to issue a bunch of shares, and because of that, its shares are down, or at least partially because of that, its shares are down 23.3% since it um, IPO'd in 2018. It does not meet my thresholds to research further um, for, from my perspective and what I require for the investors, for my investors. So I would not do further research into it for that. Even if I did, even if Zora did meet those thresholds, it's massively overvalued right now. Um, as you hopefully, as, as I hopefully illustrated in the Kronos comparison. Because of that, I would not recommend buying um, Zora right now. And I will not do further research into it for my purposes either. Um, great case study though, Naveed, uh, Naveed K. Great case study, though. Interesting. Interesting company, interesting business model. I don't think we talked about a SaaS company yet in these videos. So interesting to talk about that. Um, hope this was interesting. Hope it was helpful. If I didn't explain something well enough, if I missed something, if you thought I should have done something better, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to research a company like this for you, I'll do so anywhere in the world. Um, all you have to do is let me know in the comments below. Every video I've done for like the last two, three, four months has been a viewer request. If you want me to look at a company like this, like I did for Naveed K here, let me know. And I'll look at any, it can be anywhere in the world. The only three things it cannot be are banks, because I don't evaluate banks, insurance companies, 
because you have to actually dig into the annual reports and insurance companies to evaluate them and it has to have revenue i did some uh took some requests from people on the companies and they were had zero revenue and they were frankly the analysis was pretty boring because there was nothing to analyze on the numbers per se perspective and at this stage i need the company has to um the company has to have numbers because again i don't care about the story at this point so if it meets those three, three criteria let me know again anywhere in the world i'll look at a stock for you if you like this video make sure to like love share subscribe all that good stuff on youtube and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we release a new video and release a new video all the time um, thank you for watching by the way and commenting uh for those people that um watch comment subscribe all that stuff really appreciate it if you're listening on the podcast all that same stuff really appreciate it but we'd also really appreciate a review because the more reviews views and lists we get to our content the more people we can help if you're looking for more some free resources on how to become a better investor faster check out the links in the description below where you can get access to our five free gifts including the full written template that we just went through visually you get the full written template and four of the free gifts um you can get a free pdf copy of my book how to value invest and you can also get a free copy of our guide seven tips to picking great stocks and three times you must sell you can get all three of those for free at the links below if you're looking for more specific help from me make sure to check out the links to our master class below as well um where you'll learn how to become a better investor faster with more tips and resources and videos and all that stuff so until next time though have a great day uh have a great day sorry and talk soon